Welcome everyone to Storytime and Wine. I am your co-host Marjorie Phoenix and along with my other co-host uh, Kevin McLemore and Ray Porch who isn't here at the moment but he will be showing up shortly. Uh, we'd like to welcome you all to our discussion on authentic allyships and powerful alliances. Um, we especially want to welcome all of you that are our first time attendees to Storytime and Wine, just to give you a little backdrop about how all of this was started. Um, Storytime and Wine was started last year, just around the time that George Floyd was murdered. And we wanted to create this safe space where people could come and just talk about what they were feeling um, and just talk through their emotions and then talk through some of the social issues that the Black community was facing and our country as a whole. Um, I've always lived by the, the phrase, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. So for me, that begins with a generative conversation. So I want you all to envision yourselves at a cocktail party um, with very interesting people having interesting conversations about the things that are important to you, the things that matter to you and affect your communities. Um, you know, I, I always say that it's a room filled with people that are thought provoking curious and that are social disruptors. So I don't know if you've ever heard that saying that if you're the smartest person in your circle, then you need to be in a new circle. <laughs> so I always want to be in a room with people that are smarter than me. Um, so that through those conversations, I leave feeling more inspired and motivated and a little bit smarter. So I hope that that is what you all will leave with here today, feeling a little bit more inspired and motivated and a little bit smarter. Um, Kevin, Ray, and I, um, in our mission in our company that we're starting, we have incorporated a philanthropy arm where we um, want to be able to give back to our community and we want to give others um, a way to do that as well. So of course with this being story time and wine, um, we want to feature wines. Um, well we're featuring wines from One Hope which is out of Napa Valley. It's a social enterprise winery where every bottle has a, a built-in give back to specific cause, as well as additional funding for charities that support clean water, education, hunger, um, and the environment. So our choice this month for the charity that we're gonna be supporting is actually um, the home of the Little Wanderers out of Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, they provide continuum care for families and children and young adults in the form of um, individual group family therapy, um, psychological and neuropsychological testing, uh, child and family skill development, um, and educational preparation, just to name a few. So they are considered to be the leaders in the field of child welfare, and we are happy to be supporting them this month. Um, we're going to go ahead and add their link um, to their website in the chat. So if you guys want to go ahead and check them out, but we'll also be adding our um, individual links um, where you all can go and purchase some of this award winning wine to support the cause. So what I'm drinking tonight is um, actually the One Hope um, Chardonnay. Um, this is the Canara Chardonnay, and um, the tasting profile on it is um, pineapple cake, preserved lemons, and butterscotch. And it tastes just like it. It's really, really yummy. So um, if that sounds delicious to you, please go over and um, get a couple bottles of that in support um, of um, the, the home of the Little Wanderers. So let's get into our conversation here tonight, because that's what you all are here for as well. You know, for the past couple of weeks, we've been, um, Kevin, Ray, and I've been hosting some conversations on Clubhouse and here on Zoom um, around implicit bias. And then specifically, we've been talking about 
the recent attacks against the Asian communities. Um, what we've seen is that the Asian community and um, the Black leaders in the San Francisco area, they had started to come together to create um, this coalition to sort of fight racism. Um, so, you know, we started asking, you know, so what, if there's a coalition, if there's an alliance, what does that really look like, right? And when we did have one of the conversations um, in Clubhouse, it was interesting because we know that there has been some, um, there's a history between the Asian and the black communities, right? We know all of that. And then we've even had some people ask, well, why would we even want to have an alliance with a group that has been considered to be just as racist towards us as white people? Um, so we really wanted to dive deep into that because you know we started looking at well what does an authentic allyship really look like because we know that allyship can show up in many different forms it can be performative in nature there's a lot of people who are self-proclaimed allies um they're doing a lot of talking but their behavior is showing something totally different um so we really want to unpack that today and see, you know, get some response from you guys about that and also look at what a powerful alliance would be as well and see what ideas we could come up with. Um, this is not just inclusive to the Asian community because we believe this is a conversation that we really need to look through through intersectional lens as well. Um, so we really want to think about all communities and how we all are coming together, um, you know, to fight against um, racism. So I'm going to start the room off with these two questions, right? How do you define allyship and what does it mean to you? And then I think a little bit later, we can talk about um, powerful alliances and how some of those can be formed. So we thought that we would do things a little bit different tonight. Um, we're going to have uh, give you guys an opportunity to mingle and get to know each other and put you in some breakout rooms for about 10 minutes um, where you'll be able to sort of share and then come back with some of your thoughts and feedback. So what we do is I think we're going to do like three people in a room. Um, when you get in the room, what I would like for you to do is share something interesting about yourself. Um, share what you might be drinking tonight, if you are, <laughs> and then um, answer those two questions. You know, how do you define allyship and what does it mean to you? <clears throat> I think if everyone has about three minutes to share, that should be enough time to be done. Um, and then we'll come back and get the conversation going. Um, but before we do that, I'm gonna figure out with how many people we have in the room now, you know, how many breakout rooms we can get going. I'm gonna have um, Kevin, if you don't mind, just chiming in a little bit before we um, we break everybody out. All right, all right. Well, <clears throat> I, I just wanna let you guys know that um, uh, this space is a safe place and whatever is on your heart, um, it's it's okay to, um, to go ahead and let it out in the event that there's a conversation where um, you're you're healing. I will I'll remind you this is a safe place and please you know allow each person to speak, express themselves fully, and like a small sip of wine as the wine falls on the back of the palate uh, of your tongue through your throat taking the conversation th that same way. Acknowledge that the conversation that you are hearing is that person's truth. Understand without debating what you just acknowledge. And before you speak, listen, inhale, exhale, and speak from your heart, not from the head. All right, it's all yours like that okay guys this is the first time i'm doing these breakout rooms i don't know where y'all are going to end up but i hope you come back okay so good luck <laughs> <laughs> and i really want to put more than three but we got two people in each room how can we do this 
try this. You can put me anywhere. Okay. Well, I'll see. I'm having I'm having Zoom do it. So here we go. And you should get your invites. All right. And they're back. <laughs> Slowly. Slowly but surely. <laughs> there's Ray, our, our, our Boston friend. Yes, there's Ray. <laughs> Ray, that's Leslie. She's in Boston, too. Hey. Oh, terrific. Hi, Leslie. <laughs> How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Oh, great to meet you, too. Great to meet How you. How you doing, Raymond? Hey, hey, brother Kevin, how are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Do we look alike tonight? <laughs> ah, good man. Good man. I'm off camera because I was trying to come back. Hi, Dad. All right. Well, we, we had a great breakout room. I don't know if... Um, I, I can't wait to hear all about it. It says, everybody back, no child left behind. <laughs> everybody back. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I cut y'all off. Listen, I told y'all three minutes each. <laughs> so. uh, be, be, before we go, go on, I, I do want to say that if we have anyone that has any direct connection with um, the tragedy that happened in the last 48 hours in, in Georgia, I want to first um, and speak for my team and my family, um, RMK Productions, um, that we send our condolences. The other thing is that um, I've contacted Gold House, which is the um, organization that um, is trying to create an alliance to lend my support. I actually registered um, my support. And I, if there's anyone that's connected to this organization, we stand behind you. And um, with that said, I'll go ahead and return it back to Marjorie. Well, listen, I'm going to bounce it off to Ray because, you know, he he missed an opportunity to greet the crowd and, you know, um, just share a little bit with everyone. And then we'll go ahead and open it up and let you guys start, you know, sharing with us um, how you answer that question. I sort of sent them away, Ray, and just asked them, you know, the question of, you know, how how do you define allyship? You know, what does it mean to you? So, um yeah, so why don't you, you know, talk a little bit to the group? Yeah, well, well, first of all, I want to apologize. I was, I was, I'm a little late getting here, but I'm so happy to see everybody. Um, this is a uh, obviously a very, very uh, current um, event and topic that we that that you guys have had a chance to kind of start exploring and talking about. But we've been having this conversation for a little while, and it is unfortunate some of the things that are playing out, and. Um, you know, I'm a fan of humanity, so I'm not happy about, you know, loss of life or harm. Um, I just had a conversation with some folks at the at, at Burlington School District, um, which has a population of about 36 percent that are that are Asian. And there are grave concerns about students coming back to school and, you know, just different dynamics that are happening there as well. Um, but I, I think for us, you know, it, it, it has to be a conversation that's that's steeped in humanity first and foremost, but but some real kind of understanding of what it is that we hope for in allyship. Is it a reaction or is it a proactive build of what's going to have communities be stronger and more sustainable for, for, for equity and for, you know, for, for what's best for all the people in a community? Or is it about quid pro quo? You know, and, and, I, and I have to name that because that's an important element to consider. And I'm not placing judgment on it, but I also think it's just essential for us to speak about these these dynamics um, in, in truth and, and, you know, in a transparent way. Um, so I appreciate everybody being here. I'm, I'm excited to hear what came out of your conversations and, um, and, and to learn as much as I can about your thoughts and perspectives. So thank you, Marjorie, for, for letting me chime in. Always great to hear your perspective on things, Raymond. Um, so I don't know if you guys know how Zoom works, if you know how to raise your hand and all of that, or you can just do this. <laughs> so either way. So um, who wants to go first and just sort of share um, 
you know, um, the answer to that, that the question that was posed. And let me call y'all out. <laughs> oh, look, I was about to say the question that was posed was that um, what we, uh, how we viewed allyship. Yes, I'll take it then. Um, in you. our group, um, I I view allyship, and I I wrote it down as a common forming alliances with those who have a common agenda and compassion for each other's cause. That is how I see allyship. Um, so that's what I look for when I'm looking to form an allyship with someone or, or something. I look for a common agenda and I look for, for that other person or thing to be empathetic or to be inclusive of my own cause or what my own mission. Okay. So, that is my answer. Thank who you. Was, who was in the group with you, Stacy? I had Jeff and Elaine Sugar in my group. And I think it was strategic that you put us together, or maybe it could have been coincidental, but it was actually amazing that we were in that space together. And we <laughs> formed somewhat of an allyship, I think, because we definitely <laughs> want to connect outside of the platform. Love it. All right. Well, Jeff, tell us a little bit about that, would you? <laughs> <laughs> did you say Jeff? Yes, I did. <laughs> no, no, it was great because um, the the other part was we all work with youth, right? And we and we all in, in various capacities, and we're thinking about how to equip our youth um, financially, um, social, emotionally, um, heading into the twenty first century. So. Um, they're working on some projects that are going to be coming up that are going to be um, good for our youth. Um, and they can speak to more about what they're doing. And what I talked about in terms of what I'm doing here in Boston with the kids I work with is equipping them with 21st century skills around entrepreneurship, um, starting businesses, doing research about what type of businesses they may be interested in doing and how it can affect or impact their community. So those are some of the things that, that we're working with our, our young people, 15 to 18, as we're coming uh, through this pandemic and getting back started with um, in-person learning and, and having them uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in our facilities. So that's uh, some of the things that we're working on. But it was, it was just like basically how we all aligned uh, perfectly um, in terms of the work that we do and the work that we plan to do. So how would you, how would you explain to the kids um, that you mentor and that you guide, you know, and help them understand um, allyship and what that would look like? What would you tell them? I would say, um, as um, Stacy brought out, uh, things that they have in common, a common cause um, and something that they feel passionate about and, you know, th just sharing particularly, you know, our, my population is predominantly African-American. Um, so black youth, right? And so the things being able to partner or galvanize with people that share a lot of the things that they're dealing with every day, you know, as, as we, know and have seen throughout this past year. But for our history, you know, being in America has been hundreds and hundreds of years. So being able to align uh, with people that have that same passion to be able to deal with that and combat it unconditionally, not with kind of stipulations, like I'm gonna jump on this cause because it's the hot thing. You know, it's a hot topic. It's the hashtag of the day. Mm -hmm. but rather than understanding the depths of what that entails on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you said Elaine Sugar was also in that group. Elaine, you want to share with us? Absolutely. So first I'll start with a confession that I have a deadline <laughs> that I'm supposed to be working on. And when Kevin reminded me of this, I said, okay, I'll be there, but I am going to be multitasking. And I get into this breakout room 
and Stacy starts talking and I can't even concentrate on anything but what she is saying. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. when, I, when I don't make my deadlines, y'all see Jeff and Stacy, and we will blame them. <laughs> uh, but you no, know, <laughs> no, it, it was very exciting and awesome. And I definitely will be reaching out to both of them. Um, as far as allies go, I do believe that sometimes we can pencil people into a hole when they agree to be our ally. Whoever you invite to be your ally, you need to believe that at that person's core, they share your vision about that particular thing. It doesn't have to be everything in life, but what they've agreed to join you, join forces with you on, you need to see the same endpoint. They don't have to see the same path to getting there as you. And you might have benefit from that because they may be able to offer you something different or a different approach. As long as we can agree on the end goal and you agree to be my ally. Now, my ally may be cheering me on today, but it may be pulling me aside tomorrow and say, hey, wait, we talked about this and some of the actions you're taking or some of the ways you're handling this could be detrimental to what you're doing. So I don't necessarily think an ally is always a cheerleader. As long as that person is coming from a place of, I'm bringing this to you or supporting you in this way, here's what I think. And it's always about that thing that we've agreed upon. I think that's the key to a good ally. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I never thought about it that way before. Yeah. That shared vision and values too, you know? Yeah. That's important. All right. So Kevin, who was in your group? <laughs> you're, you're asking the guy with the bad memory. Um, <laughs> Brittany and Mrs. Mobley. Yes, yes. Uh, it, it's it's funny that um, um, that we ended up um, in each other uh, other's room because um, <laughs> the conversation was so much like minded. I mean, especially I I had a heavy heart from the last time we did this, but I'm I'm gonna let them speak first, and then I'll go through. I don't know how you did this, but you did a good job. Picking All up. right, magic. Who wants to go first? I know Di said she was multitasking. So Brittany, would you like to share? Or Di? Di Zena? You... So. Yes. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. I'm multi I'm I'm fully here, but I'm like um Miss Sugar. I was like, it's either not being here or <laughs> or taking care of what I knew I needed to do at 12 o'clock today. So I'm here. <laughs> um, and same thing. I had to sit down for a minute, take myself off camera and get in, you know, and, and see Mr. Kevin's eyes as we were speaking. Um, but I, you know, I kind of, I came in with a bit of a heavy heart, so I didn't answer the question directly. Um, one of the things that, oh, one of the things that I've been present to and just kind of hanging out on Clubhouse a little bit is, and what happened this evening was that there's so much passion and hurt and trauma and, um, you know, wanting to be heard amongst Black folk when it comes to, to issues of race, that um, we just have so much inside of ourselves that, that can hinder the conversation because as soon as someone says something that isn't um, PC or isn't the group think, everyone loses their mind. And I was in a group and there were hundreds of people in there and something happened, you know, someone was on the stage and they said something that people didn't agree with and everyone just went crazy. Like people were talking over each other. And, and you know, I was thinking about um, the, the conversation that was shared with us last time, the, the Asian group that had 5,000 people on and no one said a peep. Um, and I just, I just got off. And then the group shut down. So Kevin said maybe Clubhouse shut it down or maybe the, the um, moderators did. But I just left feeling really sad. Like when will we be able to unite in and of ourselves and allow people to have different opinions and find the core, find the, you know, the lowest common denominator 
so that we can stand on that and be united. But it just feels like we're so fractioned. And then we're talking about alliances with other people. Um, and for me, an ally is an ally. Like that person is not living my life. She's saying this piece of what you are talking about, I agree with, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, um, I don't know if they're gonna go toe to toe with me. <laughs> you get to blend back into the background of being a white woman, even though I know you're my sister when we're talking and I know your heart is in it. At the end of the day, when they come and line up, I don't get to decide whether I'm in or out. So I have very mixed feelings about it. I, um, like I said, I came in with a heavy heart having watched that go down on Clubhouse. Um, and you know that's why I keep showing up to these spaces because they're safe, we can be real, no one's getting shut down about anything. Um, and I'm just always looking for you know, the smart people in a room, what say you? And how does that vibe with what, I, what I'm thinking about? I'm done. <laughs> well, My name is Dizema and I'm done speaking. That's wisdom right there. That, that, that's wisdom. Mm. You just spoke some wisdom into the space. We appreciate you, Di. Mm. Yeah, that, that's why you guys put me um, in, in that room. You know, I, I always talk about, you know, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. You guys just confirmed it. <laughs> So um, I don't know if Brittany is able to speak, but we'd love to hear her feedback. If not, um, you know, Kevin, if you wanna, you know, just share with us a bit. <clears throat> All right, um, then I'll go ahead and speak. Well, um, you know, when Mrs. Mobley brought up um, the last clubhouse, I mean, Raymond and Marjorie, you guys both know that my heart was extremely heavy. Uh, I shook my head afterwards because I didn't understand what was wrong with our people. Um, you know, after sitting in a room and watching 5,000 Strong have a conversation and having things in place, I kind of looked at when we had this conversation of building alliances, it's the same way we are starting, you know, our business together. I, I start with, you know, why are we doing it? What's our, what's our purpose? And I think, you know, it's like, peeling back the, the layers of, of a fruit in order, in order to get to the meat of it, you've got to first create, you know, um, some type of an emotional response to, to why take, take action. And that first layer that we peel, peel back is, you know, you know, why do I have, why are we in this situation? What's my purpose? What am I doing, doing to make this uh, better? And then after you get the first layer out, you look at all the other layers that's underneath it. And when I look at the fact that they're so organized and the reason why I, um, they are in a better position than um, black, black and brown people is because of the different layers. You have a person that basically says, look, I'm going to lead this way, but having the conversation. I mean, I'm going to take the conversation I had with Tara earlier and, and steal a little bit from her. You know, this is my R&D department, um, rip off and duplicate daily. When she said earlier that, um, you know, we... Um, is emotions over uh, intelligence. And a lot of times in, the, in that room, emotions got the better of intelligence. And what happens is most intelligent people, because they don't want to deal with conflict, especially when it's nonsense, they shut down and they quiet the room. You know, um, So I, I think that's the reason why our, our, our people are so separated is once we identify the, the true leader and we sit at the table with the leader, and you, you've got, I'm going to use this as a visual. The Last Supper, God sat down and he had all the disciples. You know, I want you to think about building those alliances, even though there was a Judas among them, the disciples all, all were together to serve a common cause. And that's why I think that when we create alliances, we have to put our differences, our personal differences uh, aside for the greater good. So when I peel back the, the, the layers, I said, you know, what do I have to do to our young people? We need to improve our education system. We need to put people in, in place, not in our local government, but people that in our communities that demand that we stop educating employees and start putting systems together where kids are graduating with a trade that they can make a difference. We've got to start upholding our women of all races and understand that without them, this planet would not uh, exist. We need to get rid of the biases 
no matter if it's based on race, sexual preference, you know, your weight, size, your height, you know, we have to debunk the CAFS caste system. So what it means to me is collectively getting important people to understand what the why is and putting the purpose behind the why. And I'm Kevin and I'm out. Ooh, you said a mouthful there. You know, it's, I feel that they are weaponizing our differences and the way, you know, our divisions, they're using that against us. They want to see us at each other's throats, whether it's everyone in the Black community, Blacks against the Asians, Hispanics against the Muslims, that's, you know, that feeds in to all of that. And so um, I think a part of that too, Kevin, is we have to find a way, and Ray always talks about this, is about, you know, being able to learn how to not always be, understand every, you know, each other, but that doesn't mean we agree, right? But we have an understanding. And somewhere through that thread, we can find some commonality, something, one thing that we can get on together and work at. It doesn't have to be everything on the list, but it can be no. that one thing. And so if you have a group of people doing that, I mean, that just makes such a difference. You but know, so I think that's that's the thing to start there and to change people's mindsets about how this should be done or can be done. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Let's just do and, it. <laughs> and believe it or not, this whole thing that's going on, and, and I'm going to give uh, Tara Todd the, because uh, she painted this picture for me. It's like the ma matrix. It's a military and strategic tactic to divide and conquer. And they know that if we divide everyone and plan enough things that's going in different directions, it makes it easy for the, the people that are power to slowly eliminate the small groups until they're none. And that's the reason why the Asian community as well as the intelligent black community understands once you eliminate the black race and take away the power, okay, then you take the next one, that's the brown. The Asian is gonna, gonna be a little tougher because they're better organized and they're funded, all right? And then it's, you're gonna go to the Jewish people until it's just them. So we've got to ignore the noise and we've got to collectively come together and create those different layers that all the little soldiers are going out in order to band together, el eliminate the, the, the distraction and stay focused on the cause. Take our education, take economic wealth, take, take build strong communities, support um, our own, own businesses, take back our, our economy and create relationships that are positive to whereas our young people have positive examples of where we came from, understanding our history and creating history amongst themselves so they can move forward. And again, I'm Kevin and I'm out. So Ms. Tara, he um, turned it over to you. Um, who, um, who was in, were you in the group with Kevin? Uh, this is actually a private conversation that we were having earlier today with regard to um, preparation for this uh, group tonight. Um, and so what I said was, um, yeah, when emotions are high, intelligence is low and everything in the matrix is, decided, is designed to divide us. So whether that's gender, sexual preference, color, race, religion, every single thing is, is designed to keep us divided. Um, for me, the thought of allyship is a little problematic because I feel like when people want to create allies, then there's an expectation that that person also has your back. And for me, that's not nothing that I ever do. Do I want to be tit for tat? I want to do it because that's where my heart and soul lie. And that's what I believe is right. So, yeah, I don't, I it's not about me supporting an Asian, a Latina, a Black, a nothing. It's about me understanding that 
we all come here without a clue of how to make it through the matrix. And we're programmed and conditioned so much to the point where um, we're just doing the best we can with what we have at any given moment. I've played into the matrix game. I've definitely been divisive and, and enjoyed that time. And I've elevated from that. Um, I've grown a lot. I've learned a lot. I've healed a lot. And so now it's more for me about humanity and supporting um, all of us have, as a whole, as well as each of us individually. So I'm not really concerned with, um, you know, the divisiveness, what, you know, if you're Black, I'm standing with you, but if you're Asian, then I'm not. That's not it for me. If you're human and I have a soul and I know that we all came from one God and we're all fractals of that God, then I know that I don't, it doesn't matter what color you are. We are each other. We are a reflection of each other. And so I'm going to stand with you because that's what we're supposed to do. And I understand like not everybody is there. You know, there's a lot of things in our history that, that have been hurtful for us, especially as African-Americans that come to mind, you know, um, there's a lot of experiences that people individually have had and, and that needs to be healed before they get to that place. Um, so yeah, I, I get that. And I'm not, you know, criticizing how anyone else looks at it. I'm just saying for me, um, yeah, I try to, to step above that from a spiritual standpoint and just embrace every human as a whole, because we've all been through the muck of it. We've all been through the ringer. We've all had moments in our life that were just, we were at our breaking point. And so I just think it's important for us to support each other um, on a humanity level uh, versus doing it because someone is a certain color, race, or religion that we happen to align with. My name is Tara and I'm complete. all about it's all about humanity at the end of the day it's all about humanity i always say you know on the day the uh, uh if, if um extraterrestrials ever come to this planet <laughs> they tell you they don't care <laughs> okay <laughs> what nationality you are we better all come together okay <laughs> so but you're right, Tara. At the end of the day, that's what it is. So um, thank you so much for, for blessing us with that. Um, okay, so let me go to my good friend, Kim. Kim, who was in the group with you? And we'll have you start off. I was in the group with Tara Todd and um, uh, Mark, Martha uh, Musselman. Um, and we each shared part of the dynamic of what what it all is that we're trying to do with um and want for the world and um my piece was about i i do you know at one time we all know that our our world was mainly controlled and built by white men and so and then it was their decision when they start allowing, allowing others, even though we kept trying to say, hey, <laughs> to be part of that. And so we have ingrained in the, in the system, in all our structures, economic, educational, um, legal, et cetera. Um, it was structured to, to benefit those who have the ideal ticket, I guess, the first class citizenship of being, um, having the characteristics of white, male, certain age, economic capital, you know, having capital, et cetera. And so everybody who is not that is dealing with various subjugations and oppressions, okay? and. And of course, you know, more than one, depending on class and race and, and culture and language. And, and, um, and then, so overall, all the oppressions uh, do need um, to see that 
it's all about trying to shift from a power over mentality that benefits the consciousness and the training and the culturation that works as what is considered the the most you know um male and white and <laughs> that english speaking and blah 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 um so I, my thinking was that we need to um, consider how they're all interconnected, all the oppressions, and how each person can have that, depending on where they are in their level of privilege or their level of subjugation, where they can speak of how to get their voice included and what needs to change. What do we need to adjust? How do we need to adjust our educational system to be more inclusive of people with different disabilities or abilities and people of, and it's always going to change given what's in that particular community. But how, you know, like our government, we don't have 50, you know, I know a lot of white guys think, oh, sexism is over. <laughs> But there's no true representation of our population, and it's because of the barriers. And the same with the legal system, even in, in, in hiring system. People are trained with certain attitudes throughout our culture of, you know, um, white women are supposed to be weak and black women are supposed to be too strong and Asian women are supposed to be wanting to just please and blah, 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 you know, and then uh, all, all, you know, the, these groups are too emotional and the real intellect and the smartest one is supposed to be the white guy or the most worthy <laughs> and, and heterosexual and et cetera. So I just feel like we can have representatives of everybody individually speaking for themselves and saying, this is where I need some adjustments. You know, I need the school rearranged in these kinds of ways. I need the workforce rearranged. I need different things rearranged so that it can be more inclusive. And this is going to take many generations, but the more we can get everybody's voice out there, the more we can create these um, changes. And as an ally, I think it's like seeing that I might not be an expert on all the issues related to race since I'm in the privileged place of being white, but I can listen and I can try to and learn and I can also use where I am subjugated to kind of help me say like, oh, okay. Oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, I didn't think about how, you know, you have to worry about, is that phone call meaning someone's getting pulled over by the cops, you know, <laughs> or, or whatever. I didn't. So there's so much I don't know about different areas. And I think we kind of like, I was just talking about the um, inter oppressions and then different people being representatives to help speak for it and saying, let's get rid of that power over that belongs to um, white male supremacy. <laughs> so. And can I just say, you know, um, Kim has been using her, her agency um, and her voice on social media, just challenging the minds and the hearts and the and the and the racism in um, on her um, Facebook feed. Um, you know, she has really like put herself out there and 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 used her voice, and I've seen that. Um, and how she has started, I can see the the responses from from everyone um, on her page and how she's gotten the conversations going, right? She's got her own little story time and wine going on Facebook in a way. <laughs> and, um, and and I'm so, you know, I'm so proud of, of, of her for doing that and, and appreciate that. And, and, you know, and I had to, to point that out, you know, that, you know, that's a form of allyship there. You know, she she's willing to do that and to, to challenge and to even be challenged as well. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. And, and, you know, always being willing to show up in these spaces and learn more, you know, so we, we appreciate that. Now, who else did you say was in the room with you, you and Tara and who else? Martha. Martha. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Martha. I was, I was hoping you were going to skip over me. <laughs> oh, no chance. Um, 
Yeah, so this is uh, this is one of my this is my first meeting like this that I've um, ever attended, and um, I I told my group I really um, I kind of I'm, I'm just here to listen and to learn. I've been doing a lot of um, a lot of reading around race, a lot of um, podcasts by different thought leaders. Um, I'm also trying to do the body work, which is hard like that the internalized I don't know I'm just on this like explorative journey and I um you know someone mentioned earlier that like I could be a part of this group right now but then um how I forget exactly how they said it but in a certain situation I like blend right back in because I'm white right um so yeah, so I'm just kind of like navigating a lot of things. And like I said, just here to, to listen and, and to learn. And I'm so great people that I met with. Um, both Kim and Tara were just so, um, so wonderful and had um, just beautiful ideas of what allyship looks like. And um, it's, it's hard for me to, to speak to what that looks like. I, um, you know, I guess a lot of the definitions that were provided were, I was thinking like more complicated than, than, you know what I mean? And it really is just like people coming together, like wholehearted, like daring greatly, um, you know, just really trying to create change and, um, you know, change the things that, that have been wrong for, for so long. And, and a big part of that is recognizing what's wrong. And, um, you know, if, if you're not, in a particular group, it is really hard um, to see those things, um, especially with, especially around race. Um, it's our our society like doesn't want to believe that this is happening. There are so many people that um, that say, you know, oh, like we already did that. You know, we 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 took care of that, and um, and it's just it's it's really sad. So it's just. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I think I'm, I'm rambling at this point, but I'm happy to be here and thank you to everyone for, for all that you're sharing. So, yeah. No, no, thank you so much. We appreciate that. And, and, and for just being willing to say, you know, I'm here to listen and to learn. And um, so we, we hope that you come back. <laughs> Okay, great, great. All right. So I'm gonna, I know there's one more group, Leslie, but I'm not sure who was in the group with you. So Leslie, I'm gonna have you kick off our last group and, and tell us who was who else was in the room with you. Okay, great. Um, so it was me and then we had Kent and Grace. Oh, in my group. perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we'll go in that order, but you go ahead and start first. Okay. Um so yeah, it was great to meet some new people in the breakout. That was fun. And, um, you know, we each did talk about what allyship meant to us. And, you know, we were similarly aligned um, where essentially, like, I'll share what I said, and I took notes because I always will forget otherwise. Um, for me, it's essentially a partnership is how I look at it. So partnering with others who are marginalized who of course are different from my point of view and then determining how and where I may need to speak up through understanding their situation. Um, and then I, we each kind of shared like our work environment, that sort of thing. Their work situation is um, more in alignment with each other than mine. I'm in kind of corporate America, but I do volunteer in the community. And so that's really valuable to me also um, because I am dealing with people that are of a different group quite often. Um, so to me, then it really is like in those smaller settings, being able to really listen and see where I need to speak up or be a voice um, and just have compassion as well. Beautiful. Thank you. And I'm Leslie and I'm out to, <laughs> to quote Kevin. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right, Mr. Kent. Hey, everybody. I'm also known as Swampy on Clubhouse. And uh, I'm not sure who else. I want to first off thank Kevin for inviting me here. I'm just so glad to be talking about this tonight. 
because I really felt a part of it in my heart, okay, versus my head. We've had some great groups. Uh, today, we were discussing the American Civil War, and we also were talking about last night uh, bringing heaven on earth. And the, I put on the chat section a book by Eckhart Tolle called A New Earth. And we, we are discussing that. There's people of all different faiths and different beliefs. And I believe uh, in alignment, in order to come together as a species, two things would be great to help us. The first one is to, uh, like you mentioned earlier about the matrix, uh, we are programmed, folks. And to change our way of programming, okay, to not determine what is good or evil, but to find out what is truth and what's perception, what is really there, because the truth will find its way. But good and evil, we will always fight and take one another's lives, unfortunately, throughout mankind, womankind's history. So if we can shift in that area, that's great. Point number two is the area of becoming present. Uh, I got hit by a 41 ton rock truck. Uh, I had seven different surgeries. I did some uh, deep, heavy thinking after I was on death's door, doorstep and, came, and coming back. And uh, I found out that we cannot change our way of being because this is the way the brain works. The brain always responds based upon what has been programmed in the amygdala, okay? So if our history is of a certain way, and I'll use the word racist, because I'm a racist, I think to some degree we're all racist, then if I do not stop myself, take a breath, and choose, step outside of myself, and say, do I really want to keep the old ways of reoccurring? And at that point, and I'm a big fan of Dr. Wayne Dyer, shifting, okay, to love over judgment, okay, mercy uh, over judgment. Uh, and the, the third area I'll tell you as well is as long as we have this set up in our system with money, okay, I think we will continue to have problems. If we can shift somehow to move away from money and move into either uh, education or energy uh, or ideas, then I think that in itself promotes everybody's emphasis towards a, uh, a new earth. So I think those are a couple structural things and the people that have, I don't know if they're gonna to leave that, but in alignment, uh, yeah, we shared a lot of things, uh, education, costume design, it was great. And again, thanks for letting me be here. And, uh, and I needed this again, thanks Kevin for inviting me and let me share in with this discussion. And with that, I'm complete. Swampy, I, I want to say first and thank you. You know, I love you, you know, and, um, you know, you, you're, you're a gift. And, and I hope you recognize that you're a gift to this planet. And I hope the planet embraces you and, and, and charges your gift and allows you to share. So, um, matter of fact, everyone, I, I, I really appreciate every, everyone for coming into the space tonight and, and um, being authentic and sharing. sharing. I mean, I, I am deeply touched tonight and swampy thank you yeah i was and looking for a one mic more drop. Thing real quick because <laughs> this is important too under the black lives matter okay when i grew up in the 60s we had a very charismatic a very great leader called martin luther king and i am concerned i'm hoping that we will have a voice from the african-american community that can garner that same concept of Gandhi, okay, and peacefulness. Uh, I think that we would really be helped on that, but I want to share that with you all as well. I, I'd love to see that too. Um, can, I, can I just chime in? Uh, please uh, do. Thank you so much for, for sharing. Um, but I, I, and, and, and being a great balance in, in my lived experience, I wasn't, you know, uh, a, able to kind of uh, appreciate that front row uh, 
bird's eye view of that experience. I've only been able to kind of backwards map that learning in my lifetime around what Dr. King stood for and what he was trying to accomplish. I think it's important. Um, I think it's important for us to be clear also um, that from a generational perspective, right? Hurt and harm looks very different with generations of folks. Um, and, and, and patience looks different, right? So I think that if you poll people, folks would be in agreement that folks would prefer, no matter what walk of life they come from, they would prefer to have peace come through the lens of, of understanding and dialogue and, and that peace, the distinction being that peace being acculturated with action and not being symbolic peace, right? So I think what we have to acknowledge today is that we have um, generations of folks who are who, who want peace, right? But you know, peace can be weaponized as well, right? And I think it's it's important to understand that if you don't have to know, then you don't build your muscle for knowing, right? And so what I mean by that is this: if if you could live in the world in a way and things don't impact you the same as they impact other folks, then you become conditioned to continuing to live in the world that way and not really being able to appreciate the impact that other people are experiencing. That doesn't have to be intentional, but it is no less um, detrimental. And so when we talk a lot about what, in, in reference to white folks, like what you have to do is be conscientious in, in every interaction that you have and put it at the forefront of your thinking, that's exhausting. It's, it's about as exhausting as it is for a person of color to have to code switch and assimilate in every aspect of their being and existence as well. So, so, so my point in that is this, Swampy. Um, I, I appreciate you know, your, your, your perspective and thinking about that element as it relates to what Dr. King stood for. The conditions were very different then. And so what I would just, what I would just ask you to be thoughtful about um, is, is really synthesizing and talking through with, with, with people that you have in your life around how the conditions are different because that's the synthesizing the past with the present with what's happening on the horizon. And I think we all have to have some capacity in doing that with some level of consistency to continue to build our awareness and solutions become create, created as we go along and not just relying on what happened before or, or assuming what happens next, if, if any of that makes any sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that because we haven't seen, for some of us in our lifetime, we haven't seen a Martin Luther King or even a Malcolm X I have. or a Marcus Garvey. Well, okay, I in have. your lifetime, <laughs> some of us, <laughs> but, um, and, and we look at the state of things, that is what we have to go on, right? So that's what we're thinking, that we need that kind of a voice again. And in, in some ways you're right, Raymond, this time may call for a different type of leader, um, a different type of voice. Um, you know, I'm afraid that we will be looking for something specific. And then when someone shows up, we ready to crucify them or, you know, whatever. We're not gonna pay attention to that because we're looking for, we're looking for that Martin Luther King. We're looking for that Martin X, Martin, um, Malcolm X. So um, yeah, I get, I get that, I get that. Let, let me add on onto that since I'm outside of Swampy, the, the only person on the other side of this that has a, experienced this when Raymond says that, you know, um, it's different. And I, I will say, and I, and I came home and had this conversation um, tonight, it's not different. I, I actually wake up every single morning with, with watching um, what's going on. And I said, I cannot believe that what I went through in the 60s and 70s is replaying almost identical. The only difference is that it's being videotaped. That's the only difference. Systematically, black women and black men had been raped, pillaged, houses burnt down, um, 
you know, I, I talk about the Ar Arkansas 300 and 237 or 31 when they lynched free, free, free black people, free black persons and left them hanging on the street and they took Polaroids with them. Um, the only difference is that um, we're not shocked by what's going on right now. We, we're shocked in the moment and then our lives go back to normal because it doesn't affect us personally. So um, it, it, it's, it's a replay in, in, in my mind. And um, I, I never thought that the conversations we're having or the things that we're, we're witnessing are being repeated. And I'm sure that if you um, spoke to anyone else that um, grew up when I, I, you know, in the day and age that I grew up, um, you know, that they would probably echo and feel the same way and on both sides. And Kevin, I want to say something else real quick. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, the home of the late, great Muhammad Ali. I knew I thought what happened to him as a young person. He won a gold medal in boxing in Olympics. Then he came to Louisville, and they would not even serve him to have a drink. So he took his gold medal, and he threw it into the Ohio River. All right. And there was another man that came through. His name was Elvis Presley. And I gave a, I was used to be a substitute teacher, and I gave my own version, and you could have heard a pin drop. So that in the 60s, like you're saying, how one was treated versus the other. Ali, we called him the little blip back in the day, but he walked the top, you know what I'm saying? And he was mistreated and he overcame. And if you guys ever get a chance to come to Louisville, please visit the Ali Center downtown. Cool, cool. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar, and I heard this story today, but apparently when Malcolm X was shot and killed, one of his very close allies, as they put it, and friends was a Japanese woman and she was there holding his head. Um, anybody know anything about that? Ever heard that? No? Okay. Well, let's Google it and see. <laughs> find out. Well, the one, the one thing that you, you, you have realized and um, uh, my late fraternity brother, John Lewis, when they stood on that bridge, if you look at the picture, there were multiple races standing there hands in hand. So when, when we talk about, you know, allyship, you know, this is more so about humanity, not about race. Um, we have racial biases. Um, we have caste systems. It's a, this whole thing is a fight for humanity. We need to save our planet. We need to save the people of that are uh, shepherds of, of this planet. And we need to grow better versions of ourselves through our children. And I'm Kevin and I'm out again. Kim, I will, I will call on you, but I've got to let Grace share. She hasn't had an opportunity to share yet. And then, um, and then we'll have you say a few words before we have to close out because it is 925. Um, so Grace, please share with us, um, you know, from, from your small breakout group. Oh my goodness. I'm having a hard time with how difficult it is to follow like the wisdom of all of the people that have spoken, especially people that lived through eras that I didn't. Um, but I can just go way back in the conversation to what we discussed. And I know early on when people were sharing their definitions of allyship, they were saying things about commonality and, and common goals. Um, but I have to say when I thought about it, I thought about it as um, ally in terms of being a person of privilege that is not in particular groups. So in that way, my job as an ally would be to listen to the voices of people in those groups and then take that message into my actions and into other spaces and places that they're not. Um, Kim is my friend. That's why I'm here. Um, and just like you said on her um, social media, she's doing that in her personal conversation. She's doing that. And um, it's, it, we're working with a different script. This conversation that you all are having um, that, um, you know, Black Americans or in, are having some white Americans do not even are not even working from the same script. So my elders and people in my family 
Um, they're, they're looking at the world as if it's a post-racial society and these problems, if they exist, are, you know, small or they're, you know, only in some places and, and they, they don't exist. So it, in that way, allyship, you know, it may be a partnership that we have a common goal, but it also may be that I recognize that this thing that is affecting this other group of people isn't affecting me. It's not something that I've experienced firsthand. So I have to listen to those groups of people and then take that information somewhere else where that conversation isn't being had. Um, and then just to add to Kevin asked in the, in the comments, if we can love our way out of racism. And I think, um, we have to get to a common language first because we have this tribalism or as Tara put it, like a matrix. We have this idea that what, what makes other people different, like their different shirts that they're wearing, their different groups, whether it's race, religion, or, you know, gender, any other thing makes them other. And so our, or even nationality, like all the people that are very like America first, it's you want to insulate and protect your tribe so therefore don't give credence or listen to when other groups of people are being affected by something. But if you think that way, um, then your tribe is going to come up at some point. Um, and it reminded me when someone was speaking about, you know, it, you know, it might be that they're looking at the Asian Americans or they're looking at the black Americans and, you know, taking down one group. Um, it reminds me of the first they came for poem that came out of, um, the Nazi Germany in the 1930s, the first they came for this group of people, but I wasn't part of that group, so I didn't speak up, and so on and so forth. So if we're not um, listening to the groups of people and their experiences that don't mirror our own, and then taking that information to political spheres and and our you know our actionable um, activism and our conversations with all the people in our lives, um, then it's gonna end up being a, a global problem because we all affect each other and we're all constantly affecting each other and then it will come up. Um, and just to bring it back to the tragedy in Atlanta, the when you all talked about divisions and people wanting us to be divided, I think if you look in any comment section on any news story, people are arguing what was the cause. Is this you know misogyny? Is it racism? Is it religion? Is it his you know upbringing? Is it um, any number of things, and it can be all of them. And we don't have to invalidate one person's point of view or one truth about the scenario in order for us all to come together and try to address it. Yep. Thank you. Well, the, the one thing on, on the tail end of that, um, common denominator in the Atlanta is that six Asian women were murdered by a single white male. So by law, it's listed as a hate crime against humanity. So um, it's either hate on gender, hate on race, uh -huh. it's still a hate crime. So the commonality is six people and six families are, are affected by the decision of, of one person. And it wasn't because he was having a bad day. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we're going to be winding down, but I'm going to give Kim an opportunity to, um, I know you wanted to say something real quick before we close out. I didn't really. I just wanted oh. to say, great. <laughs> I, I couldn't wait to hear what she had to say because uh, I find her very inspirational. Um, we, I share her post, she shares mine. We kind of go back and forth. We, I, I, she's just wonderful. So I just yeah, wanted sure. to make sure she had a chance to speak. That good, was all. Good. You know, and, and one of the things that Kevin Ray and I, we always talk about too with, with having these conversations, it's like, where do we go from here? Like, what do we, what do we do with all of this afterwards? And, you know, um, you know, this within itself is we're doing right. Cause we're having the conversations. And I think we've, we've all just grown a little bit and become a little bit more aware. Right. And that's what we want to happen. But then from that, where do, where do you want to go? Do you feel like you want to go a step further? Like Kim now, she feels she's probably more armed when she gets on social media 
and and doing the work that she's doing what do we want to do as far as taking that in our communities with jeff and and his young people and and stacy with hers and you know what is what is that what does that look like to continue to sort of, of do this no matter how you you look at allyship and alliances um when you step out the door it's like okay this is humanity it doesn't matter you know race creed or whatever um i'm your ally just because you are my my brother and my sister in humanity that's just a given right and that's sort of like the mindset we we want to have with each other so that really at the end of the day yeah you know you and i might have some bad history you might have done some things that you know made me upset but if um if you're hurt i'm gonna stop it i'm gonna help you um you know so that's that's the point of it so the key things like you said was talking about you know the common cause we all in humanity, we all have a common cause. We all wanna, you know, we all wanna live healthy lives. We all wanna be free, um, shared values and visions, you know, for the most part. Um, I, I don't think that there's that many differences. I think there's a lot more commonality. And if we could try to find that in some way, um, I think, you know, that would make a difference. So um, Kevin and Ray, I, um, I don't know if Ray has something he wants to say before we close up, and then Kevin has a quick announcement. Um, no, I, I just really wanted to say thank you. I, I, it was so cool to be able to listen to everybody and, and hear people's perspectives. And I wish I was here earlier to be a part of the breakout group. group. <laughs> but I first and foremost just wanted to say thank you for everybody coming and being transparent and authentic in your stance um, and, and having great um, trust that this right. can be a space where we can have the conversation and agree or disagree and, and go away with hopefully something that we all learned and, and or in or, or a connection that we made where we can continue to build on our learning and sharing in real time. We've got people active, active with young people, active in education, active like don't sleep on those elements as well, because you can continue to build your learning and action through those people here as well, myself and everybody else. So. Just thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And I hope you come back and stay with us and continue to, you know, be a part of this continual learning space and activism space, because that's what this is. Having the dialogue is activism. Yes. Um, and so, so just be mindful of that. So thank you. All right, before I, I, I make my announcement, I, I'm, I'm gonna add one more thing um, to this because listening to, to Grace and I've had this conversation is that when we have spaces like this with each other that look like us that think like us and we go back to the spaces when it's just people that just are, are us, we have different conversations. There was an interview that was given to two um, KKK members that had left uh, and had a change of heart, which is the reason why I, I asked, is it possible to, to, to um, out love racism? And um, when they were asked, um, how do you change the, the narrative? And he says, when you're in, in a space and people are um, spewing hate from, from a place where there's no knowledge or, or support, he says, how you silence the room is speak out and say something different. Because he says, there's a lot of people that's just going along with the crowd that are not part of the, the direct narrative, but don't know where they're going and they just keep continue to follow. So with, with that said, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit so everyone will know you guys are going to be the first to hear that RMK Productions will be RMK. Um, it will be Storytime and Wine, the podcast. It'll be One Queen, Two Kings, the podcast. It'll be Talking Wit, W I T, Kevin and Son, the podcast. In the next two weeks, we will be launching our first podcast under RMK Productions. And then we have a big secret that's coming out. All I can say is 10 United. Thank you, everyone, for participating, lending your voice, sharing your love, sharing your heart. We have all grown. We, we have all become closer and attached. And again, Kevin, and I'm out. 
Yes. Yeah, so you guys, please, if you're on Clubhouse, um, please go ahead, um, follow us, join our club, uh, because we'll be doing um, weekly talks and breaking some of these other discussions down a little bit more. So you can always join us then. And then you will get an email letting you know when our first podcast drops and uh, continue to be a part of the conversation. So we appreciate you all for being here tonight. Uh, go out and change the world. Good night.